and welcome to part two of Wing Needle Wow. Kelly Richardson here at ABQ Sewing Studios in Strathroy and today we are going to continue with part two of the wing needle demo that I did last week. So if you haven't already watched that demo, watch that and then we will continue with today's project. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you step by step through the process of creating a mitered corner napkin and then we're going to finish it off with some wing needle work. So first of all, let me show you what we're making and then we'll get right at it. Okay, so here is the beautiful napkin that we're going to make. Um, if you look, turn it over, there is the lovely miter stitching. I just zoomed in a little bit so that you can see the, the beautiful mitered corner and the um, wing needle stitching that covers up any of the raw edges that you might have. And that wing needle stitching just gives it a little touch of elegance. Now with this mitering technique that I'm going to show you, you can use this technique on other cottons, some of those beautiful quilting cottons that are out there and get some really funky napkins going. Um, just keep in mind that the busier your fabric, the less any stitching is going to show. So if you really kind of want to show off that heirloom look, you're going to want to go with a solid or maybe a tone on tone. Um, but if you're not too worried about your wing needle stitching, then you can just use some of those really lovely quilting cottons that are available. So let's get started on showing. So here's the supplies that you're going to need to make one napkin. You need a, first and foremost, you need a 20 inch square of cotton linen. Um, this is a shot cotton again that I'm using. Now the shot cotton comes in a gazillion colors. Um, so there's lots of choices there. Now you can actually make the napkin pretty much any size you like. I like to start with a 20 inch uh, square because between my hemming and my mitering, I'm going to take up about three inches of seam allowance in total. So that ends up finishing about a 17 inch napkin and that's just a really nice size. So I like to start with a 20 inch square. I want my decorative thread and I'm also going to use that for regular sewing thread. I have strips of my water soluble stabilizer. Of course I have my wing needle and I will also need a regular needle for my sewing machine. I have a marking pen. I have my fabric folding pen and I have my rotary cutting ruler. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a quarter inch hem. So I've given my fabric a nice little press, got stuff out of my way, and I want to make a quarter inch hem. Now you can go ahead and line up your rotary cutting ruler on the quarter inch mark and draw a line like so, and then go to your, to your pressing board and, and, and fold it over very gently on that line and press as you go all the way around, making sure that you're exactly a quarter of an inch all the way. Or you could use one of my favorite tools, which is the fabric folding pen. And that is this little guy right here. And it is a magic pen. So I take my magic folding pen and I still line my, my rotary cutting ruler up on the quarter and I will gently squeeze as I am moving the pen down and then all I need to do is just press with my fingers and it folds over beautifully right on the line that I drew right there. So that's a much easier way to make a seam than drawing it and then going to the ironing board and folding it over. Now I am, once I get all the way around, I am going to go to the ironing board and give that a press. Okay, so I have pressed my quarter inch seam all the way around in the corner. I'm just leaving it folded over like that. I didn't do anything fancy in the corner just yet. No mitering at this point. And you're now gonna take your magic pen and we are going to do another seam one inch in. So line your fabric up on the one inch and take your magic folding pen like that and there you just created 
your second seam, your second hem, which is a one inch. So now go ahead and do that all the way around. Now don't unfold your quarter inch. Leave that one folded in. Draw yourself a one inch hem and give that a press all the way around. So the goal at the ironing board is to have uh, some very nice strong creases pressed into your napkin. So what you want is a strong crease here on all the corners. All right, so open your napkin up, leaving this still folded. We don't want that opened up. And then what you're going to do is take the napkin and you're going to fold it into itself. So now I have right sides together. So this is the this is the right side of my napkin and I've put those together and what I'm doing is I'm lining up the crease from this side with the crease from that side right there and of course I'm lining up the diagonal edge here. So what I'm basically looking at is a great big triangle. Let me just zoom out and show you what that looks like. Okay, so what I did with the napkin is I just took it, folded it on itself so that I could line up this corner right here and I'm lining up the crease from the front with the crease on the back. Okay, so I have, I have drawn these lines in with um, friction pen just so you can see them. That is not a necessary step. I just want you to see where the creases are. Now I'm gonna take my rotary cutting ruler, this little guy right here, and what I want to do, see that the 45 degree line runs through on this ruler? I am gonna take this ruler and I'm going to line the 45 degree line up with this crease. So that's the crease that I drew in. And I am putting the tip of the ruler right at the tip where those two lines I drew in marked, meet, sorry. I'm straight against this edge right here. So the line of my ruler is up against there. My 45 is up against here. And I am going to go and draw a line right there, like that. All right. Now this is the this is the line when I go to the sewing machine that I'm going to sew directly on top of. So we'll just throw a little pin in there, just to keep that straight. I'm going to go around and mark all four of my corners before I go to the sewing machine, so that I can do them all in one go. Okay. So here I am back at the sewing machine. I have a regular. 8012 sewing machine needle in there. I'm using a matching thread to my fabric and I'm on regular normal straight stitch. So what you want to do is on those lines, that last diagonal line that we drew, you want to sew directly on top of that line. Don't sew over your pin. So I'm just lining up the center of my foot right on top of that line and I'm just sewing on top of that line. And you're going to do that on all four of your corners. Okay, this is my last corner. Now if you found um, when you were lining up your corners and if they didn't quite match, don't worry about it, just refold. You want to do that before you get to this point, that way you don't have to pick out any stitching. There we go. That's my last corner done. So, next step, take your ruler and line the quarter inch line up on the stitching that you just did. And let's just get rid of that excess bulk. You can nip that off with your scissors or you can nip it off with your rotary cutter. Whatever makes you happy. Now, if you're nervous at all, before you do the cutting and you don't want to cut that little bit off there until you've tested it, give yourself just a little test. Just poke that through and look at that. Look at that beautiful little miter. Okay, so cut that little bit off. Okay, here we go, where I just cut that last one off. Okay, so there's my four corners done. Now I'm gonna go around to each of my corners like this and I'm just gonna poke it through. All right, and look at that beautiful miter. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I also like to, just before I go to the ironing board, just to make sure that I have a nice, super sharp point there, is I will actually use my point turner. Do yourselves a favor and, and don't use the tip of your scissors. Get a point turner, they're like super cheap, and they will stop you going right through the corner. 
So give your corner a little poke. Here's my last corner. I'll just flip that. Use my point turner just to give it a little poke. So I got like a super sharp corner there. All right, so now I've got all four of my corners poked out. I'm gonna head quickly to the ironing board and just give that a light press all the way around. There, isn't that lovely? Now at this point, all you really need to do is do a little top stitch all the way across around just to make sure that you catch that seam. Now, of course, I'm not gonna stop there because I wanna go at this with my wing needle. But one of the things that I like to do is I will use a, a matchy, matchy thread that matches to my fabric nicely. And I am actually going to sew a line of stitching all the way around, sewing it from this side. So then when I go and do my decorative stitch with my wing needle, I can follow my line of stitching from this side. So you want this to be a matched, a matched thread because you don't want this thread to stand out. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine. I have um, swapped out and put my decorative stitch foot on, but just because I think it's a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing, what I want to do is top stitch all the way along here. So if I have my decorative foot on and I line this up exactly in the center of my foot, I can move my needle position just a tiny bit, one or two little pokes over to the right hand side. And when I'm sewing, I'm watching here to make sure that that is going into the center. And I am sewing just a hair to the Let me side. Just of that. show you that zoomed right in. So I've got my decorative foot. You can see the very center right here. Visually, that's exactly where I want my stitch line to be. So this is my crease. And I'm making sure that it's going exactly into my center of my foot there. So what I need to do, because if I do, if I leave the needle in the center needle position right there, I'm going to be sewing hit or miss, actually, as to whether I actually hit this seam right here. So if I take it just one stitch over to the right, maybe we'll do two. There we go. Now you can see that I'm definitely sewing into that seam and I'm not going to end up with areas that are missed and big gaps when I'm finished. I have also increased my stitch length just do a three, I want it to be a slightly longer stitch than normal. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the way around. When I get to the corner, I wanna stop with my needle in the down position, right in that corner. And I think I just need one more stitch. There we go. I'm gonna pivot. And there I'm lined up again, right down in the center. And off we go. So at this point, you could consider yourself done. I've taken it to the ironing board. All of my seam allowance underneath is caught. So I can actually call this a finished napkin. But where's the fun in that? We're gonna go ahead now and I wanna do some decorative wing needle stitching down on the front of a napkin. So what I'm gonna do this time now is I'm gonna sew from the front of the napkin, but I'm going to use this line of stitching that I just put in there as my guide for the wing needle to guide me around. So back to the sewing machine. Okay, so here back at the sewing machine, this is, I have chosen one of my favorite hem stitch um, stitches, and this is where the, the strips of stabilizer come into play. You want to put the stabilizer underneath so that you're actually gonna be sewing on top of the stabilizer. So I've just lined it up I'm using my line of stitching that we previously made in the last step. I want to line that up with the very center of my presser foot. So let's just zoom in a little, maybe you can see that. So there's my line of stitching. I want that to be right in the very center of my presser foot. I want to start right in the corner, not, not on the very edge of my napkin. I want to start in the corner where my stitching is. And now you are just going to carry on all the way around and do your hem stitch all the way around. Remember as you're stitching to let the feed dogs do their job, you're strictly guiding. So don't watch the needle, it'll go back and forth and all over the place. You just wanna watch and make sure that this line of stitching is going into the center of your presser foot. Now when I get to the corner, I'm, I'm sort of watching how the stitch stitches forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. And it's right there when I'm on that forward stitch that I want to pivot. Now that is gonna change depending on which um, stitch you've chosen, of course. 
And when I do, now wing needles don't pivot horribly well because, you know, they've got those little wings on them. So I will pivot, and when you'll see when I turn, I'm lined up again right on that center mark. That's kind of where you want to be. And then I just take another piece of the stabilizer, tuck it underneath, and continue on my merry way until I get to the next corner. So the next step now is to rinse away all of your stabilizer and then give your napkin a lovely little press. And look at that. You have just created a beautiful heirloom looking napkin. These make great housewarming gifts or just have them dress up your table. And you've got that beautiful little miter on the back. People just think you are so talented and it's super easy. I don't think I have to necessarily tell them how easy it was. I'd much rather them think that I'm super talented. So there we have it. When people are impressed by how beautiful your table setting looks with those really expensive looking napkins, or how lovely the edging on a dress or a shirt looks, you can just say, I did it myself and I was just winging it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I have uh, given you some information or inspired you to try something new while you were in your happy place. So this is Kelly Richardson and until next time, happy sewing.